So our first step is to import an OBJ. Um, I've got this Golem set up that I use for Marmoset. So I've got the OBJ here. Um, imported it with one, it's only got one material, so it's pretty simple to work with. Uh, I'm gonna set a lighting preset just to get some more interesting lighting on the model from the beginning. Um, and the first step here is to add a new layer as the diffuse. Um, this is gonna be our paint layer for that texture. Um, you'll see if I just import the normal map as well as a new layer, you can see when I when I bring it in instantly, we've got our normal map assigned. Um, currently looks like it's not the correct uh, tangent basis. I think the, the green channel is flipped, so um, I will edit that in the material. Um, let's see, edit material, and, and then we change the the uh, the mode to max mode. So now the green channel is inverted and it looks pretty good. It's lighting correctly. Uh, if you hold L and drag your mouse, you'll see you'll move the, the light, you'll rotate the, the light around in the scene. So you can kind of edit your lighting. Um, we're going to import a glow map or no, specular map. So a specular map comes in. Um, when you import the texture, you can just tell it what what texture you're importing. Um, we're gonna do the same for our glow map, which is an incandescent map. And we'll do one more, which will be our gloss, is that our diffuse. Oh, so diffuse, I actually edit the material itself. So this currently is, a material like the, the diffuse has been imported on top of the diffuse color. So what we want to do is actually in the material, go edit material, select the option bar, the, the file box next to the diffuse color and select the texture there. Um, the diffuse channel, what I end up doing is just building, basically painting on top of a flattened PSD. Uh, I will paint a texture directly on top of, of this. You can see the lighting change pretty dramatically. Uh, and set the tone mapper on to get a better vary, like the better varied range. You can clamp it down a little bit. Uh, Shift L will toggle between full lighting, full like full specularity and everything, normals and everything, to just diffuse lighting, so full bright. Um, right now, I'll be editing. I'm just gonna paint. You can see how how nicely and quickly this paints. This is real time um, over a seam. I'm painting pretty clean lines and right on top, like a separate layer in my PSD, essentially. Um, the layer modes in Mudbox are emulating the place, or sorry, the Photoshop uh, layer modes. So you'll have hard light and soft light and screen, all of the fun stuff that you always use. You can see here, I'm, I'm, painting, I'm painting quickly over seams. This is actually substantial difference in where the UV seams are. Um, the difference between this and body paint is that when you change textile, textile resolution, uh, your brush size changes when you're painting across the seam without turning on projection mode. You'll note I'm not turning any mode on, I'm just painting straight across the model. Um, and that will even do that across materials. So if you have multiple materials, you can change that. Uh, you can change the opacity of, of your model by clicking that little slider. The slider here, just dragging it up and down. It's kind of similar to the Photoshop sliders. It's super handy, uh, especially when you're working with hard lights and you know other other modes. And there's a lot of variance you can get from the, the stamps in Mudbox. I think that the brush setup is substantially better uh, for me anyway than in Photoshop. When I use Photoshop, I tend to pretty much just paint with three or four brushes. It's just kind of, am I using a hard hard brush, a soft brush, or a texture brush? And there's only a few that I use. But with this, I feel like because of the way the brush is set up, it's very simple. There are some sliders involved. Um, as you're brushing, you can actually change the size by holding B. That'll change, you'll see when you click, you'll, you'll get a slider that'll, when you pull, um, while you're holding B down, it'll make your cursor bigger or, or smaller. Um, and then M will change the opacity, essentially. It's called strength in, the, in Mudbox, but um, the opacity will change based on the amount you drag it up or down. 
you can see I'm actually you know changing um, paint mo or, uh, lighting modes by hitting Shift L, toggling between full bright and full lighting. Um, you can actually paint in real time uh, on your normals and specular and diffuse, you know, just selecting layers and editing them separately. But it doesn't actually change performance, which I think is absolutely fucking awesome. It's very, very silky smooth, um, even on a relatively budget computer at work. I'm able to get a pretty consistent frame rate and not feel like I'm painting in a mud bucket, which is funny because I'm using mud box, but mud buckets are bad. Mud boxes are great. Just keep that in mind. Um, you can see I'm cycling through a bunch of different blend modes here, um, and they are they are all the Photoshop layers, so uh, I can do whatever I want with that. I'm going to add another layer to my diffuse, and you can see I'm using an, there's another mode you can use uh, called projection mode, where basically I can place a stencil on the screen, and uh, you can get a repre visual rep representation of the image. You can see there's the the stencil, and you can scale it by holding S and using right click to zoom or to scale it up and down. Um, middle mouse will pan it around, and left, I believe left click will rotate it. Um, so you can get some pretty quick variants on it. Um, so you can use this to, to get some cool texture uh, just straight out, of a, straight out of an image. You can use any images you want. Uh, you can see this, there's a bunch of presets, but pretty much anything you want. If you want to do concrete on a pillar, that's great. If you want to do uh, scales on a monster, uh, elephant skin, pretty much anything you want to do, you can straight dump it in through stencils. Um, you can turn them on and off with the, the toggle. Uh, there's an on-off toggle just there. And basically, you know, go a little heavy-handed with it and just erase back. And while, while the stencil's up, you're actually stenciling through, um, just like it's an alpha, which is kind of handy. You can see it's not erasing everything. It's just erasing where there's, there's positive space. Um, changing between alpha types, just sort of see I'm rotating and, and scanning things to add a little variance. You can use one alpha to a pretty great, pretty great uh, advantage when you use multiple sizes of it. So if you're doing pores on a face or, or wrinkles on a face, you can use it at a really broad scale if you make it very large and, and scale way down and just get a couple quick wrinkles that are micro kind of detail. Um, that looks pretty good. As you can see, the uh, the effect of, of using that projection brush right over, and you'll see uh, you can you can do a little bit of editing after that. You can do you know if you wanted to make it a soft light layer, you can do it right there on the basically a PSD. Um, and that's not a problem. So you can change you know change the opacity, bring it down, mute it a little bit, and get a nice little texture variation in it. And then check it out with the full lighting. It's, actually really really awesome really impressive to be able to do all that together uh, up until now i've been using body paint and it doesn't do this nice nice of a job um, you can also add bump map layers if you want to do some micro detail uh, as alphas like this um, this is a pretty garbagey attempt at it but you, you can hone it in and, and be a little bit more specific with it I'm doing like having a concrete texture you can just kind of lightly put over the top of the model. Uh, you can start doing your micro detail as a pass, as a bump map, and later convert it to a normal map in, in Photoshop. Um, you can see though it is displaying in real time as if it were applied as a bump map, which is absolutely awesome. So it's not it's not quite as arbitrary as having white and black, you know, white being the highest point and black being the darkest point. Um, scratching in little nicks and, and dings around your model is really, really simple when you're just doing displacement. Uh, so now if you want to actually take this model or take these textures that you've created and, and work them into your Photoshop file, you can just uh, select the channel, right click it and say export as export channel to PSD and you'll see it open straight up in Photoshop. And now I've got all the same layers that I had for my, my diffuse channel right here. You can see there's the initial one, that's actually the diffuse on the bottom, that's the one I imported as, as the material. Uh, and then on top of that, we have that uh, first pink layer right there. And what I, what I like to do is just paint a little bit in the corner so I can have a quick snap um, 
where I don't have model model uh, UVs or anything like that. I can just take a quick snap, um, paste it into my model or into my uh, my texture page. I'll zoom into the corner and just use the move tool and snap it. I see it snapped into the corner. And now those are overlaid right on top of my PSD. Um, and since the modes are the same in Mudbox, I can actually use the exact same modes in Photoshop. And I think maybe my microphone is not recording this. That would really, really suck. Okay, well, we'll see. Um, so yeah, and then we basically have, you know, grab each, grab each version and, uh, or each layer and drop it in and emulate both the opacity and the the uh, the mode, and we'll have them right in there. So super handy to be able to just work in a PSD and actually know that you're going to get the same layer modes right out of it. So I can put this back to soft light, and it'll look identical to what it did in the texture page on the mud box preview. You can see there's the on off. And then it's just really just a matter of, of working with uh, the back and forth there. You can see turning on and off the, the layers is pretty simple. I think that essentially the, the initial setup for this is the, the annoying part, making sure you get all everything shown up. But yeah, we can so we can toggle between full bright and full lighting. And when you toggle between those two, you can uh, you can see I could work over seams. If I want to paint paint out seams that I've I've put in by, you know, messing up the specular or sorry the uh, the diffuse, um, it's really quick to paint over uh, messed up seams. I think that's a huge boon itself, just being able to work just on the diffuse and the pixel to uh, pixel to pixel ratio, that, like the, the change that happens in body paint is really really frustrating to me. So that fact that we have uh, a brush that just works straight up. I can, no matter what I do, I can stroke. It's quick. The uh, the viewport isn't sluggish at all. I don't have to wait for the projection mode to reproject and fade out edges or anything. I'm just straight painting. It's maybe one of the more handy tools for me. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm very very pleased with adding this to my my pipeline. Um, the the viewport rendering can actually be very complex. You can add up the field tone mapping, ambient occlusion, um, you can get a really close approximation to the final game asset and, while painting in real time. It really is super handy. Uh, I will say the one thing that this, this model doesn't look as wonderful as it could. Um, it turns out our engine has some some funny little bits about it. So I'm, I'm displaying with max tangents and it's not quite appropriate. Um, but yeah, so mud box rendering, super handy, uh, painting in real time. Let's do it. Anyway, thanks a lot, you guys. Uh, so yeah, keep keep up. I'm gonna try and keep updating so much monsters.